Okay, Striker, come on. Oh, I got one. Got him! I got him! All right, guys. Exactly. That's what we've been waiting for right there. 18 and a half, guys. First striper of the year. All right, guys, so that ends our trip for today. We'll go home, cook this up, and we'll have a great meal tonight. All right, guys, so we're back home. And this was our little last minute catch here. And we have our nice 18 and a half inch striped bass here. So I already scaled this fish but it's a really nice, healthy looking fish. Perfect eating size. So some of you might think this is weird, but my grandfather's favorite sashimi is striped bass. When you dry cure it in salt and sugar, it almost becomes crunchy like squid. Um, not as crunchy, but the meat is nice and firm and it has a nice bite to it. My grandfather is 93 years old, so I don't really tell him what to do. Why should I tell him how to live his life? So let's get to it. So I'm no outdoor chef life, guys, but let's give this a shot. I forgot to gut it. So I've sectioned out the fish into individual portions. They're really beautiful. I love striped bass. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up or not, but it's really oily and the grains are really um, stuck together. It's a really firm fish. Striped bass is one of my favorite eating fish. As well as the skin is absolutely beautiful. 
That's why I kept it on because it adds a lot of eye appeal when you're cooking it. But if you're eating it raw, I would suggest taking it off. So to make these fillets even better, I'm gonna dry cure them in salt and sugar for 10 minutes. Okay, so we just finished our dry brine. Let's pull these guys out. See how they turned out. This meat is really nice. So today I'm gonna keep it real simple, guys. Two of these pieces I'm gonna make into sashimi, and two of these pieces I'm gonna bake with olives, tomatoes, and a little bit of olive oil. So I'm gonna save these two thicker pieces for the oven, and I'm gonna take the skin off of these. The skin is kind of delicate because I took the scales off. Striped bass skin is so beautiful. But these pieces of meat are really nice. For a white fish, it's really oily. And this is a really solid piece of meat right here. And it's the minimum size too. So this meat is really translucent. It's almost like squid, if you've ever had squid before. All right guys, so that's it. It's not outdoor chef life, but it's the best I got. My grandfather would like it. I feel pretty lucky having sushi grade fish around right now. A lot of people aren't lucky enough to eat sushi right now. Not a lot of people know about striped bass sashimi, but when they find out about it, they're gonna go crazy over it. So the first thing you're gonna need is parchment paper. You can find that at any grocery store. But here are two pieces of striped bass, again, skin on. Then I get diced tomatoes. So you just get some fresh diced tomatoes. Can is good, but if you have fresh, that's better. 
Then you bring in those fresh green olives, but this is the star, the olives. And you wanna make sure to put some of the juices of this in there too. But this is chopped olives, green olives. And I love that tang of olives, the saltiness. I just love everything about olives. So I'm gonna put a lot of olive on this. Yeah, just right on the top. And then I'm gonna get some of that oils and the juices. Drizzle that over the top. So we got the fresh striped bass on the bottom. Diced tomatoes on top of that. Chopped olives on top of that. Let's get in there with a little bit of olive oil. Some black pepper, salt. And that's it guys. So now we're gonna wrap the fish in the parchment paper. It doesn't have to be airtight, just so that you get a little bit of steaming action. So let's pop this in the oven at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how big your fish is. So I forgot to mention, if you're gonna have people over and have a party and do this, you can individually wrap the pieces and it looks a lot better. So each person will get their own little package of fish and then they open it up and it looks really great. Oh, the smell. Woohoo, the smell coming out of this, man. You really smell the olives. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, man. It's so flaky perfect. This is like how they make it in the restaurant, guys. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's go in with the, the olive and tomatoes. Whoa. If you guys make the recipe exactly how I did it, you will not regret this. This is like date night fish right here. It's so moist. It's so flaky. So tender. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. So good. And it's so healthy. But the oil, the olive oil, and the oil from the olives, the olive oil and the oil from the olives really makes a difference. It's like, it feels like, it feels like it's unhealthy, but it's super healthy, right? Because olive oil is that healthy fat. I'm gonna eat this whole thing before I even plate it. Get a nice, nice chunk of olives here. Let's get a nice chunk of olives. Mmm. Mmm. I gotta save that for my grandpa. 
but wow. You gotta try that, the olive and the fish. Woo! When you're making this, don't skimp on the olive oil either. So I haven't done a catch and cook in a while. I was kind of overdue for one. But catch and cooks are really tough because you're so tired after fishing. It's the last thing you want to do is go home and film even more. But we have all the time in the world right now. So I thought I'd give it a shot again. If you guys like this video, please comment below and like this video. And I'll see you next time.